What's going on guys? Welcome to Own the Chaos where we talk about everything OTC stocks. And if you are joining me for the first time, welcome. I hope that you learned something today. So I just created this uh, dope website. Earn a Wix. subscription from you. Let me show you. And what, I'm doing. Uh, what we're going to be talking first about today is the stocks to watch. Now, or um, more in particular, I wanted to and excuse me one sec. More in particular, I wanted to talk about the stocks that I had uh, to watch for the week yesterday and how they turned out. Uh, we had some pretty monster runs from some of those stocks that I told you guys that, to be mindful of, to watch why I saw value in them. And it turns out that uh, they really uh, took off uh, today. Um, some of them settled back down, or one of them settled back down, the other one uh, really maintained its gains and looks like uh, we could be headed for um, a much um, uh, higher highs than even today. So uh, one I really wanted to focus on was FRFS. Uh, I know there was kind of like uh, some open questions on that after the, after last night's video. Uh, and so <laughs> last night's video was atrocious. I didn't even share it. Oh, you know, I didn't even share it on any of my other social media platforms, which by the way, there's links in the description for that if you want to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. Uh, but uh, last night's video, I, I had trouble with hotkeys. You were just looking at my face the whole time. I don't know. I, uh, apparently, uh, the rust forms quickly if you go uh, three days without going live so um yeah so i do apologize for that but it looks like a lot of you were able to get into frfs and um really capitalize on that cype run so uh do uh, i am glad that that you guys were able to uh, capitalize on that and uh, see the value as i saw it um so uh without further ado we'll go ahead and do that just gonna like i usually do i'll welcome some people in uh if you're joining me first for the first time I'll be happy to answer any of your questions at the end of the live stream. Just go ahead and put them in the chat. And uh, after I get done uh, with tonight's topic, I'll go back through and answer those questions for you. No problem. So um, just kind of welcome, welcome everybody in. Uh, Tropical Trade, what's going on, Ryan? Uh, Julie, Nick, um, you know, the familiar faces sharing what's going on. Um, some new ones too. Uh, Moise, what, how's it going? I think that's how you spell that or say that, Moise. I don't want to butcher it justin how's it what's up man and uh as uh, alan so i want to give alan a shout out actually um alan deserves it because he watched every single one of my videos from one to 103 and i couldn't even do that myself i don't even want to watch myself for that long so uh kudos to you i know that you said you've learned a lot and it's already started to reflect in your trade so um Fortunately for the rest of you, though, I'm coming out with a course that condenses all that so you don't have to watch all 103 videos and hours upon hours upon hours of content. It's all condensed. It's all nice and organized so you don't have to search through and try to figure it all out. And that will be coming out early to mid-June along with our website, which is WeTradeHQ. It's going to be involving a lot more than just myself on that platform. It's a social exchange where we can all talk about whatever stocks we want, whatever cryptocurrencies we want whether it's futures, whether it's shorting, whether it's options, whatever, Forex, it's all going to be there. And I encourage you to sign up. It's wetradehq.com. You're going to get uh, updates on the build of the website. You're also going to get notified the day that we go live uh, through that email. So register uh, uh, ASAP so that you can get notified. We have over 800 people already registered and excited for what's to come. So I encourage you to do, to do that. We are also on Facebook at wetradehq. Check us out. Uh, it's a growing community and we're growing fast, so uh, don't miss it. So, uh, all right, so F FRFS, uh, and I promise I will not be touching the uh, shift key because I still haven't updated that. It's going to be all mouse. So, uh, yeah, always trying to improve those videos, guys. So, let's go. So, FRFS had this pulled up on TradingView. So, as I told you guys uh, yesterday, FRFS I felt was probably about ready for a really uh, run up from uh, this low here on Friday or, or this closing price on Friday and the reason why I say that is because uh, you know what I'm going to do here too this is so in case something goes wrong y'all can tell me and I can see it how about that all right so anyway so with FRFS when it when it went up the reason that it went up was because I was showing you guys yeah that didn't work uh, how Charles Schwab had it had FRFS 
listed as Gifa Industries. And Gifa was looking to be a publicly traded company in the United States. So I actually figured this out. One of Somebody uh, shouted this out within the group, and I, and I certainly appreciate that. If you tuned in on last night's video, I asked somebody if they could share their Charles Schwab account, and somebody actually said, you know what, you don't even have to do that. You can just go to the Charles Schwab homepage, click on quote as you type in FRFS, and it comes up uh, Gifa. So if I go into here and type FRFS, Gifa Inc. shows up. And that's big because Firefish is, uh, you know, every, the rumor's been around for a long time now that uh, uh, way back in uh, late or early fall, there was a reverse merger that was uh, looking to uh, uh, come here. And so that is a really big catalyst that usually, uh, you know, historically um, causes stocks to run. So FRFS. Uh, has now started its process of running because of this remer reverse merger with Gifa. And I actually found some interesting news here as well. This is a Daily news, Daily Mail News. It's a, um, a European website. It's usually pretty uh, reliable. It look, you know, I checked it out. It looked like it was pretty legit. Um, and so Gifa was to release, uh, have a press release for the end of May. And so this was released on May 5th. And it looks like Gifa is actually trying to going a uh, try trying to and going to uh, follow through with its um, uh, promise to be traded within the U.S. Uh, via Firefish, and so a lot of people. Um, and again, this is the investor side where I found uh, that that website. I went ahead and just kind of backed up somebody else's due diligence. I didn't go and do my own, or I mean, I <laughs> let me say it that way. So I didn't. Uh, rely on somebody else's due diligence. I went back and did it on my own. Um, and so this is why that FRFS is running. And, and this has kind of been the rumor for quite some time now. And it looks like it's finally coming into fruition. So this was uh, the uh, close uh, on Friday at right around seven cents. This is the close and even the high of, of around 16 cents. Um, uh, and that was today's high. It was around 16 cents. It closed right around 13. So, um, just and that's why, like I told you guys, that this was one to watch yesterday. But guess what? So, you know, that was one of the stocks that I told you guys to watch. Guess who didn't get into this stock? Yep, I did not get into it. You know why? Because I missed my entry, and I was real pissed about it. I could have doubled my money, no problem, uh, if I had gotten in at the open. Um, but you know that's how it goes and and that's one thing that i wanted to like emphasize with you guys don't force trades i you know yeah i was pissed about it for about five minutes and then i got over it, it was like you know what hey i missed the boat whatever you know maybe i'll i can capitalize on uh you know a nice dip or something like that there really wasn't a lot of volume that got into it so i don't want you guys thinking that just because i said this was a stock to watch it this was a stock to buy because i didn't buy it but clearly, you know, it was one to watch for because of all these clues and all these signals that were saying that this could potentially run. Um, should I have bought it? Looking back on it, absolutely. But I didn't, and I missed my entry, and I wasn't going to force a trade because I didn't want to do that either. Uh, once, once certain catalysts come out, the volatility is so great, you don't know which way it's going to go. All that technical analysis that you guys do for those chart people, when a catalyst arises, you basically can throw all that chart stuff and technical analysis out the window because it becomes so volatile in the OTC that it's almost impossible to trade uh, via charts unless you are really, 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 really good at it. I don't know anybody who's good at trading when, when, a, when a volatile catalyst comes along like that. Um, so for me personally, just because the volatility after a catalyst scares me, if I miss my entry, then I don't bother with it. I don't force a trade because I could lose my tail on it. I don't. I don't even want to mess with it. So I was just enjoying everybody else winning on that. I was so happy for people who got in that uh, and were were winning. People who have been in it. Uh, it was great to see. I, there was plenty of people within our group who that have been in FRFS sub penny. Um, if you have been following me all this time, back in the fall, we actually played FRFS when it was sub penny. It was triple in the triple zeros. And then it had highs of 16 freaking cents today, guys. 16 cents. And that's that's the power of this group, okay? I mean, that it, it's, it's so awesome. Look, and here's the other thing, okay? You don't have to take $10,000 positions to make a thousand freaking bucks on a five to 10% potential. If all you did 
was do what I what I've been saying for you to do, like with with um, you know just start off with small positions to protect your your risk. You know, if you don't even if you have a small account, you can still make good money here. If you had that one to three thousand dollar nest egg that I always preach to you guys that you should have when you're starting the trade, and you only took a two or maybe a five hundred dollar position in that, even if it was on Friday or even if it was just at the at the opening bell today, you would have. You would have doubled your money if it was today. If you had been in it since uh, the fall and you were just real patient with it, you would have been sitting real pretty. I mean, I don't even know what that is doing the math, but it's a it's a crap ton of money with a five hundred dollar position. And then what do you have to lose? You know, if if it goes down, maybe you lose fifty, sixty bucks at worst, maybe a hundred dollars because you know it, based on your level of risk. And you know, if you if you cut your losses and move on and find something else, but like. That's the power of the OTC, guys. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. You know, take all that um, that that mentality of like, oh, I have to have a lot of money to make a lot of money. Of course, that's true. But you can also have a little money and still make a lot of money. Okay, you've seen me now. Uh, if you've been following me, uh, especially within the last two months, that all I've been taking is about thousand dollar positions and making two, three, four, seven thousand dollars on these thousand dollar positions. And it, um, you know, it doesn't take much. It doesn't take much to to really focus if you have the right tools, if you surround yourself around the right people, and that's what I offer you. And and, and above all that, it's free. Everything that I'm going to be offering, and, and the only thing that you're going to be paying for at this point is is the the course that I'm going to be providing for you, and and, and really. I mean, how much have you, if, if you have your bachelor's degree, I just graduated college, how much did you pay in tuition? And it, it's, it, you know, tons and tons of money. And so what I'm giving you, um, it, it's not going to be, it's not going to break your bank. It's just something so that I can still maintain uh, myself and something so that I can still provide this great content for you guys. Um, and that's just going, that's the only thing that you're really going to be paying for. We're looking at other services as well, but it's really not going to break you. Uh, all of it, in my opinion, is going to end up paying for itself. Uh, but the website that we're building, We Trade HQ, is going to be absolutely free. You'll be able to talk and look at live data and do technical analysis and talk with everybody for free. It's not going to cost you a dime. You don't have to spend any money. If you don't want to buy my course, I don't give a crap. Don't buy my course. But if you're looking to learn in a more structured way and, and with you know uh, some simple videos with a simple scanner setups and everything else, um, and then all I'm asking for you from you is going to be like you know just a, a little bit of money to be able to earn yourself a lot of money. And 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 that's. I was just talking to Jake, uh, my partner, about this. I was like, you know, I really don't, I feel real, almost kind of feel bad charging people for this. And then Jake was like, but you deserve it, you know. And I, I feel weird about hearing that from somebody. But, you know, I do really genuinely care about you guys. And I really do genuinely want to make positive changes in your lives. And I know that I've been doing that already. Um, but in order for me to do that, I need to be able to at least sustain a little bit, right? But so the platform is going to be completely free right now. Everything is all absolutely free. So if you're joining me for the first time, check the links down below. We are on Discord. We are We Trade HQ on Discord. Uh, my name again is Brad Smith, and this is the Own the Chaos channel. We're going to have a bunch of other influencers on there that's going to provide you with courses, whether like I said, forex, crypto, whatever. They're all going to be on there eventually, and I, I just can't wait for that. So I know I went on a little bit of a rant there, but I just, um, I'm just so passionate about this, and I just can't wait. We're getting so close, and it's just one of those things where I just can't stop talking about it. And you know, sometimes I gotta stop myself and say, okay, Brad, I need to really have somebody in my ear just being like, shut the heck up, uh, let's move on. So <laughs> anyway, as usual, let me just go ahead and answer some of the questions here. Um, from some of you who are tuning in, if there are any, um, could you discuss the caveat emptor on FRFS uh, during your video? So the yes, yeah, so uh, Zishan, uh, I hope I pronounced your name right. Um, you guys give me some challenging ones sometimes, but uh, Zishan. So uh, caveat emptor is a uh, symbol that it, if you go and look for FR, FRFS on OTC markets, which I always direct you guys towards. It's a source where you can view the profile of any OTC stock. Copy dumpster status can be slapped on a uh, stock for any one particular reason. And there was some speculation on FRFS way back in late fall, 
early winter, I believe, where there was an email that was floating around that actually was should have been considered a, a promotion, like a paid promoter, and uh, FRFS didn't disclose that. Now I don't know if maybe they just didn't know they weren't they they had to disclose that. You know, they had to make it public knowledge that they were uh, submitting a paid service or whatever. Um, there's some speculation swirling around that. Sometimes when a copy and enter gets slapped on a, on a stock, there's really not a whole lot of um, reasons given as to why. There's just these seven reasons as to why a uh, copy and enter gets slapped on a stock and you just basically have to guess which one it could be. Um, but there's speculation on that promotion uh, email and so that might have been what it was. Um, okay. Can somebody put his page so I can subscribe? Uh, yeah, I mean it's in the description. So if you just go into the description of this video, you can check it out. I appreciate that. Um, preach. <laughs> here to pay off those loans, Josh. Yeah, I mean if you're here to pay off the loans, great. The one thing I want to just let you know that you know I don't want you to trade specifically because you're in debt. You know I don't want I don't want you know if you're still able to pay off debt and, and use whatever money that you have set aside to trade fine, but I don't want you putting yourself in any kind of trouble just to trade. So I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, so uh, any input on UOIP? I know that's been flying around. Uh, so uh, I think that's pronounced chain 33. Are you asking for input on UOIP? Send me a direct message in discord and send me some uh, due diligence on it. I, I this one I, I've, seen floating around. I just don't know much about it. So uh, shout me out and, and send me some info on it. Be happy to look over it with you uh, at a later day. I know historically you've said that you cash out half of your position once your position doubles. Once you let the other half, how do you decide how high it is and where it'll stop? So it's just a comfort level for me. You know, when I, so Josh is asking, so my selling strategy a lot of times is when I look for stocks, I look for stocks that have potential for my position to double or more. So when my position doubles, typically, you know, the the ninety percent of the time I end up selling half of my position once it doubles, so I can protect that initial investment. Uh, so and then the rest of it in there is just free shares, and it's all profit. And whatever I sell it at doesn't matter um, because it's going to be profit. Now, it all depends on your comfort level. I was always taught, you know, sell when you're happy. So once you sell that initial position, Josh sell when you're happy and that's how i've been able to be successful with it that's how a lot of us within uh we trade hq and then the chaos has been successful with it um so it's just it's just your comfort level if you are happy with the gains that you've made then take them if you know if you made if your profit's five thousand dollars and and a stock is sitting at five cents you sell and it happens to run at ten you know oh well you made five grand who cares i mean that's just the way i see it uh, you know, and I don't want to have to tell you when to sell at a certain price because I don't want that liability, obviously, right? Because I don't want to be like, oh, yeah, sell at five cents and then it runs to 10. And then you come back at me and say, hey, why didn't you tell me to sell at five? It ran to 10. Because, you know, there's just some things you just don't know. You can't foresee certain stocks running the way that they do sometimes. So I always just say, sell that initial position make or that initial investment. Make sure that's protected once you reach a, reach a certain threshold of profit. And then let the rest ride as free shares. Sell when you're happy and then move on. And then move on to the next one. So, uh, can you touch base on TOS Mobile in your course? Um, so, I don't know much about TOS Mobile. Maybe I can add to that later in my course. Just, that's just something that I don't really mess with because TOS just drives me crazy. I, I find it very complicated. And I always try to instruct people and teach people based in the most simplest form possible. And that's how I trade. I trade as simple as possible. I don't have a lot of indicators. My charts don't look like spaghetti with all the indicators that there are out there. I just, I try to do it as simple as possible. So, uh, you know, it, that might be something that I could touch on later on down the road. Uh, a lot of CMGOs on here. Uh, so CMGO is still a stock to watch for, guys. 531 is not here. I know that it was up and down. Uh, it actually ended pretty well today as, as far as I'm concerned. I really liked the action on it. It ended at, uh, I think, somewhere around the one threes, if I'm not mistaken. I'm sure someone, one of you will correct me. But just off the top of my head, I think it closed around uh, 1.3 cents somewhere around there uh, and we are still coming up today's 529 we're looking for that 531 court date if you are uh, wondering about CMGO I have plenty of videos uh, in the in the last uh, couple weeks on CMGO and why I see value in that uh, what are the top news catalysts that potentially move a stock in any upward momentum so that's a great question I actually um, 
somebody asked me that as well, so I'm going to cover that right now. Uh, so the top news catalysts for me, uh, mergers. Mergers are huge. Case in point, CYPE. That was a, a, a huge uh, catalyst for CYPE. It ran subpenny all the way up to 60 cents was a high today, I believe. Unfreaking believable. We have somebody within our group who had, uh, you know, over two hundred thousand dollars were in profit on CYPE. Uh, unbelievable. I can't even fathom that. Two hundred over two hundred thousand dollars in one trade on CYPE. So mergers are huge, obviously. Uh, acquisitions are usually pretty big. Reinstatements are pretty big. Um, you know, and, and the other side of that too. So catalysts don't always mean that it, that it's going to uh, cause the stock to rise. I always view catalysts as you know the the flip side too. So reverse merge or not reverse, so reverse splits are usually uh, a, a negative catalyst for a stock. You know, any kind of downgrade from you know current status, such as stop signs, yield signs, uh, copy emptors, those are all negative catalysts. Uh, a bunch of other ones. I'm actually going to create a list for you guys on uh, types of catalysts that I look for. You know, um, revenue, it's not a major catalyst usually. Uh, getting out of debt is a big catalyst. So if they're able to pay off all of their debt, that's a big catalyst that will cause a, a stock to run. So uh, I will go ahead and make a list for you guys. And I'll actually make like a FAQ and pin it to uh, the Discord chat for you all to uh, check out. So yeah, somebody said 131. So um, yeah, so anyway. Uh, when do you think CYPE will stop going? Again, I can't give you that answer. Um, okay. So uh, all the questions have dried up at this point. So thanks for tuning in, guys. I do appreciate you uh, giving me this level of support. You know, ever since uh, the split with Tech Buds, it's just been overwhelming. Um, and me and my business partner, Jake, have just really been taken aback. You know, we, we had small expectations and you guys have just blown them all away. And I really can't thank you enough for the level of support that you provided for me, for Jake, we trade HQ and own the chaos. Um, uh, it's only, and we're only going up from here, right? So, uh, with that, if you, uh, uh, learned something today, please push that like button. So show me some support for this free education that you got today. And uh, if you liked uh, my um, spiel, my little rant, whatever, if you enjoy this, if you're entertained and you want to see more, please subscribe to my channel as well. Hit that alert button so you'll get notified every time I go live and you can ask all the questions that you want. And that is all I got for you guys. I will see you all before the bell as always. And B. Smith is out. See you tomorrow, guys.